Any idea what to do today? I've conquered so many worlds and amassed a huge fleet, but it feels so boring now. Sir, with all due respect, maybe you could try another game. I have! And I also enslaved all the populations there, too. Um... How about this? This. I like this. Set a course for the nearest planet. It's time to test some of these mods out. Hey there, it's Stupid again. Today I'll be presenting another top 10 mods video, but for Stellaris this time. Stellaris is a pretty amazing space simulator game already, with loads of exploration, conquering, and empire building you can do. But I gotta hand it to the modders. They put in all the effort and make mods that somehow elevate the game even further. That said, here's my personal list of top 10 mods for Stellaris. Some are purely graphical, while others make major changes to gameplay. Either way, they are all great mods. Before we we begin don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel done good let's dive in first up we have the ui overhaul dynamics mod or rather collection of mods i'd argue that this mod is way more important than any others even if it doesn't add lots of new content kind of like how your mom loves your sibling more despite them being a useless Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, I went off track. As I was saying, the mod is really useful. Why? Well, the Stellaris UI can be a bit crappy at times. At higher resolutions, it can't keep up. So you get tiny information windows that require you to squint to see any meaningless info. Kind of like holding at an elephant through a tiny hole in the wall. Hey, can I ask a question? Yes, what is it? Why do we have to spy on the elephants like this? Shh, 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 shh. Keep the voice down. Very sensitive. Sensitive? What do you mean? If you're struggling with that issue, UI Overhaul Dynamic fixes it and also adds a lot of other quality of life features. The main interface mod adapts things to the player's resolution, increasing the width and height of all the windows. You also get bigger planet overviews with more info, an overhauled ship designer screen with more sections and lots more. This mod's UI tweaks change the flow of information a lot. If that's not enough, there are 18 add-ons that give you even more options to adjust. They range from increasing your building slots to changing the font to removing backgrounds and so much more. It's honestly a must-have mod so you don't have to struggle with the Stellaris UI. On the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of mod size is the Forgotten Queens mod. It's a massive unofficial DLC-esque mod collection by Complex that adds loads of new content to Hive-type factions. When I say a lot, that isn't hyperbole. I really mean it. Complex stuffed all his mods into one big expansion pack. I mean look, there's a new main screen. Okay, that's it for new content. I'm just kidding. This mod also has a whole boatload of other stuff. We have two new origins, Overmind, which is a singular mind controlling many underlings, and a hollow point. I can say that right at all. A giant symbiotic organism that hosts other smaller creatures on it. New civics, planet types, plus various other things like new rooms, portraits, events, jobs, weapons, and so on. I also like how this mod adds new ascension paths for hive mind governance types, namely that four paths are ectogenesis, xenotransplantation, mind coalescence, and omnipresence. What do these ascensions do? Well, find out for yourself in the mod. It's basically a free add-on to the game, okay? With all the new potential factions, you can finally live out your fantasy of being a hive overlord. Let's be honest, hives in the base game are kinda cool too, but they get boring after a while and tend to lack that secret sauce. This mod manages to fix that, absolutely worth downloading if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Speaking of adding new content, you should also download the more events mod. Towards the mid to end game, in Stellaris gameplay tends to sag a little. When you see most of the map and are dealing with the less fun parts of keeping an empire running, more events is designed to keep things interesting by adding unexpected twists. I'm pregnant. <gasps> No, not that kind of twist. I'm talking about adding new game events. You know, stuff like discovering precursor ruins on settled planets and own space, or finding an abandoned war machine that helps you conquer the galaxy. Nothing too major. Most of the events added with the mod are meant to flesh out the game and are lore compliant, while also giving you some nice loot for completing them. It's a pretty straightforward mod, but at least it gives you enough content to make your endgame Stellaris campaign less dull as you conquer the universe. <laughs> How's the video so far? Are you guys enjoying it? If you are, remember to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more pla planets explode, sorry, I mean if you want to see more interesting videos on various games like this, just click the subscribe button like this. At number 4, we have another content heavy mod in the form of Alpha Mod 2.7. Like the Forgotten Queens mod, it's billed as an unofficial expansion to Stellaris with the mod creators seeking to enhance the in-game universe. Alpha mod adds a lot of features for the player to explore like new buildings, mechanics, ship types, components, resources, policies, government types, etc.
If you want a mod that enhances the vanilla experience while not diverging from the Stellaris universe, like some mods which add Star Trek and Star Wars content, this mod should be a priority to install. Note that the mod is still in alpha, so quite a few features haven't been implemented yet. Still, it's definitely worth a try since all the mechanics are integrated in one mod and you won't have to worry about conflict between mods. Alpha Mod 2.7 is compatible with version 2.8 of the game. If you have an early version of the game, the mod creator offers compatible versions as well. Next, we have Gilly's Planet Modifiers and Features. It aims to make exploring space more exciting by adding over 300 unique modifiers for planets and the rest of the world, over 100 new planetary features, and a similar number of events. If you're bored because you've discovered everything in the galaxy and gathered every scrap of lore, this mod is perfect for you. Warning, unknown planet has been detected. Weather status unknown, surface conditions unknown. Send down an exploration team. Maybe a few robots or something. Understood. How's everything doing there? How's, the, how's it doing down there? Very rainy, sir. In fact, it might be a bad idea to... Oops. Just boot up a new game, and soon you'll be zooming through the galaxy, discovering brand new sights and sounds. Maybe you'll find a machine world core. Maybe you'll land on a planet with acid rain. Maybe you'll discover a world full of inhabitants ripe for enslaving. Best of all, you can trigger even more events after colonizing worlds, which may activate quest chains full of ethical dramas. Save the baby. The old man is expendable and gonna die soon anyway. No, that's unfair. Maybe he'll live 20 more years. If you've played Stellaris enough to regularly get a lot of Ascension perks, you'll realize the amount of perk slots is pretty low, which can be pretty annoying when choosing the right perks. This mod resolves that by adding an additional 12 perk slots for a total of 20. Pretty nifty, eh? Now you won't have to worry too much about micromanaging all your Ascension perks. As an added bonus, it also adds a repeatable version of the Ascension Theory technology. Of course, this could potentially be a game breaker, so the mod creator balances out by making the tech extremely rare and costing a large amount of research. You'll likely only get it in the late game and you may not even see the tech if you're playing in a small or medium galaxy without tech tradition cost reduction. Note that the mod comes in 20 and 25 slot variants. Also, when installing this mod in the most up-to-date versions of Stellaris 2.6.3 and higher, the new launcher may not properly read the mod as updated when you install the updated version over an old version. In that case, the creator recommends you delete the mod from the mods folder, start the launcher, close the launcher, and install the mod again. Number 7 on my list is the more menacing ships mod. It adds 14 ships, 17 civic 14 tax, one job, and one mega structure to the game, with the primary purpose of adding onto the armadas of Crisis Empires. This means that enemies can utilize them, and so can you. If you've taken the Become the Crisis Ascension perk from the Nemesis DLC, now you too can become an intergalactic menace. Depending on the ship type, you'll need to research a specific technology before you can begin building it, like Titans for Galleons and Nanite Transmutation for Grey Goo. With 14 different ship types and various strategies for using them, it's worth experimenting on all of them to see which you like best. Note that Different ship types also use different resources for upkeep or building and may require the new megastructure, the Nanite Shipyard, in order to build. Before we continue, let's take a quick break. Even galactic overlords need rest, right? Since we've got some free time, why not drop feedback in the comments down below? If you like the vid, or if you think it sucks, just be honest, don't worry, I won't bite you. You can also suggest more mods for me to check out, or even ask questions, or just ramble. That's what comment sections are for, after all. Done? Not yet? If you're not done, we can come back to it later. Let's resume the video. Stellaris is about more than just gorgeous starscapes and being a galactic overlord. As your race expands into the stars, the galaxy will be impacted in various ways, and gigastructural engineering makes that impact more powerful and interesting. It expands on the game's megastructure system, adding up to 40 more megastructures. You've got everything from solar system-sized computers to particle accelerators as large as the sun. Come on, that's really cool. You played with toys as a kid and imagined all the crazy sci-fi inventions, right? Now you get to test them out in the game. Come on. What's not, what's not to like about that? Of course, they come with a downside. These megastructures eat up a lot of resources, but are honestly pretty worth it as they can provide large bonuses to your empire. One cool megastructure in particular is the Nicoli Dyson Beam. It basically consumes all the planets in its system and requires the power of an entire star. Also, it can utterly destroy systems. Behold my power. 
The second to last mod on my list is essentially a difficulty slider mod. Despite being such a simple addition to the game in comparison to some of the other mods, it makes its way into my top 10 list as the functionality is invaluable. If you've ever struggled with the early game being too hard, where your empire got stomped into the dirt quickly, get this mod. If you find the game becoming boring, get this mod. If it's either too hard or too easy in general, get this mod. Want stronger fallen empires and well, you, you get the point. No, seriously, I highly recommend it. You can adjust almost every aspect of the difficulty from enemy scaling to diplomatic influence, upkeep on rival factions to the various other bonuses, Leviathan's crisis, etc. And even random difficulties. Very handy, especially if you want to challenge or are finding things to be too punishing, that is. The mod's been updated for version 3.0, though it's still compatible with 2.2 and 2.8. If you like this mod, the creator also recommends adding on to the more modifier extension standalone and Hemotheps dynamic difficulty mods to create an even richer experience with more levers uh, to push and pull, yes. Lastly, here's a multiplayer mod for you guys. PHI MP balancing is at its core, focused on adding a multiplayer option and balancing the game around it. With the stated intention of offering a multiplayer audience a fair and interesting game set, PHI MP tweaks lots of the base game features and balances levers. Of course, this means it may not be entirely suitable for a solo playthrough unless you don't mind the adjustments. Still, it's very worth getting if you ever want to play Stellaris with friends. What's interesting about the mod is that it does more than code and MP functionality and balance changes. It also has features that are sorely missing in the vanilla game. I'm talking about things that affect combat and diplomacy, like ways to break truces, taxation of assholes, attrition, and lots more. Keen on playing with others, give the mod a shot. There are lots of things to discover here. Woo! That was a rather substantial list. Some of these mods are absolutely amazing, to be honest. I really admire the modders and their dedication to improving the game, so do try these mods out. It'd be a shame if they didn't get any support after all their hard work. Got any mods you think should be in the list? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you for all the Patreons that support the channel. We're gonna roll the credit roll of all your beautiful, gorgeous, awesome names, and we're gonna run a credit roll list of everybody that helped work on this video. Thank you all. You're amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.